Now we would like to discuss the challenges of bioenergy with you. Conversion of biomass to bioenergy could be a feasible alternative for non-renewable energy sources such as oil, gas and coal. However, there are still some challenges to overcome. These challenges are the discussion of energy versus food, the energy costs to produce energy, the upscaling of new techniques and final the juridical aspects. Looking at the discussion of energy versus food, of course in our bi basic needs of life food is more important than energy, mainly if the latter is used for transport. In the world hunger does exist and should be abounded. It is not accepted that in certain parts of the world people suffer from hunger while biomass is exported for transport fuels in so-called rich countries. This subject asks for a very critical approach. First of all, lots of biomass is also used for hygiene products like soaps from palm oil. If you question fuel from biomass, then why not soaps from biomass? Second, the supply chain aspects. Wet biomass, for example, can not be transported over long distances. So the main issue to tackle food fuel discussions is that food should be available in each region, preferably by local production. Local, at least for the commodities, proteins, starches and fats. In fact, this is agro-policy. If there exist surpluses or biomass that never can be used as food or feed, these biomasses should be transferred to energy at least. The second challenge for bio-based energy is the energy costs to produce bio-based energy. This is called the well-to-wheel calculation. As mentioned earlier, transport of biomass is an important aspect, next to harvesting or at source and processing. So it is wise to calculate how much energy is used in megajoule in a total supply chain to gain one megajoule of energy for use at the consumer. For example, bioethanol is produced from grain. Producing and transporting grain costs energy, but also the processing costs a lot of energy for evaporation. Very often coal is used for this process, so the energy impact should be included. Another example is burning of wet biomass. Of course, one could yield energy from this biomass, but the majority of energy is lost for evaporation purposes. So then you calculate the net yield of energy per unit of chemical energy input. A third challenge for bio-based energy is the upscaling of new techniques. We all have clever ideas and we try to test them on lab or pilot scale. To implement it in real life takes a risk both on technology and on financial aspects. Moreover, some techniques are only cost effective at a certain high scale. For example, producing bio LNG from biogas needs at least a 500 cube per hour methane production. The final challenge for bio-based energy application are juridical aspects. Sometimes you have a biomass that is not used in a sustainable way, for example aerobic composting. It costs a lot of aeration and transport energy to destroy the chemical energy content, but it is rather cheap, well established and in legislation well accepted technology. Can we change such a process in a more favorable or sustainable process? Yes, we can, but it asks for a good collection of biomaterials, specification should be imposed, and the digestate should be accepted as a fertilizer. Last example, special routes of biomass conversion are blocked for many years due to subsidy periods, sometimes over 10 years. Changes in such period are not often welcomed. We hope you liked this introduction about bio-based energy. If you have any ideas to improve this lesson or if you have any questions, suggestions or remarks, please take the initiative to contact us. We would like to encourage that. We wish you good luck with your assignments.